we want to determine the value of c to make our piecewise defined function continuous everywhere. We have f of x equals x squared plus three x minus four if x is less than or equal to c. And we have f of x equals x minus one if x is greater than c. So notice how our piecewise defined function is made up of a quadratic function and a linear function. And if we graph these functions by themselves without restrictions on the domain, these two functions would be continuous everywhere, which means we only have to be concerned about this function being continuous at x equals c. In order for this function to be continuous everywhere, we have to be able to sketch this piecewise defined function without lifting up our pencil. To get a better understanding of how we're going to approach this problem, let's go ahead and graph the quadratic function and linear function on the same coordinate plane without any restrictions on the domain. So the red parabola is the graph of our quadratic function and the blue line is the graph of our linear function. And again, our goal is to find the values of c or to determine these intervals here so that we can graph this piecewise defined function without lifting up our pencil because if we can do that, the piecewise defined function is continuous everywhere. So what we're gonna do here is focus on these two intersection points of the parabola and the line. Also notice that we have the quadratic function if x is less than or equal to c and the linear function if x is greater than c, which means graphically the parabola must always be to the left of the line. And there's actually gonna be two values of c that would make this piecewise defined function continuous everywhere. One value of c, which we'll call c sub one, is equal to negative three, and the other value of c, which we'll call c sub two, is equal to positive one. Notice how if c was equal to negative three, we'd have the parabola when x is less than or equal to negative three, which would be this piece here, and then we'd have the line when x is greater than negative three, which would be this piece here. Notice how we'd be able to sketch this orange piecewise defined function without lifting up our pencil, and therefore it would be continuous everywhere. But similarly, if c was equal to positive one, we could graph the parabola when x is less than or equal to positive one, which would be this piece here, and then graph the line when x is greater than one, which would be this piece here. Again, notice how this function would also be continuous everywhere because we can sketch it without lifting up our pencil. So even though graphically, we know that c can equal negative three or positive one, let's also determine these values algebraically. And because these values of c are the x values of our points of intersection, we can find c by setting x squared plus three x minus four equal to x minus one. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'd have x squared plus three x minus four equals x minus one. Because we have a quadratic function, we'll set this equal to zero and see if it factors. So we'll subtract x on both sides and also add one on both sides. Notice how on the right side we have zero. On the left we have x squared plus two x minus three equals zero. This does factor nicely. The factors of negative three to add to positive two are positive three and negative one. So we have x equals negative three or x equals positive one, which means as we found graphically, c can equal negative three or positive one. Let's go and take a look at these two graphs one more time. If c was equal to negative three, we would have the parabola when x is less than or equal to negative three, which would be this piece here. And then we'd have the linear function when x is greater than negative three, which would be this piece here. And notice our function is continuous everywhere because we can sketch the function without lifting up our pencil. And the second value of c was positive one. So we'd have the parabola when x is less than or equal to positive one, or this piece of the graph here. And then we'd have the line when x is greater than one, which would be this piece here. Again, notice how this graph is also continuous everywhere. I hope you found this example helpful.